Hi, welcome to my 2013 analysis of the Preakness Stakes, uh, which is um, Saturday, May 18th at Pimlico Racecourse. Um, that's card is race 12, which is approximate post time at 6.20 p.m. 13 races on Saturday look extremely competitive. In addition, Friday's card has uh, 12 races uh, with the two features, the um, Grade 2 um, Black Eyed Susan and the Grade 3 Pimlico Special. In addition, on the Friday undercard, um, King T. Leatherberry has his uh, millionaire uh, Ben's Cat in a five furlong turf race. Just looks like two fantastic undercards. Although the big three races look very formful and very chalky, um, there's still great races to talk about and, and watch. Uh, the other undercard races might be the better races to bet, but let's dive right into it. Race 10, Pimlico Race Course. Um, I do like the favorite, the lukewarm favorite there, the seven emollient. Uh, this is a son of em uh, a, a, a daughter of Empire Maker, trained by Bill Mott. Mike Smith signed on to ride. Freak last time in the Ashland Stakes, one by nine at Keeneland. Uh, has had prior dirt form, so I don't really think anything to do with it. Synthetic really picked the horse up. I think that uh, she's a green horse going the right direction, and uh, I expect her to run a big race. Uh, hopefully, she doesn't bounce out of that race. Uh, her only bad effort to date was. Uh, in the Gulfstream Park Oaks, where she got tr uh, trounced by uh, Dreaming of Julia. So, um, interesting. I think, though, that she is a play coming right back and um, probably would be my selection. Second choice in that race is a horse called Fifty Shades of Hay. It's a Bob Baffert trainee um, playing second fiddle in his barn to Midnight Lucky. Was going to run her in the Kentucky Oaks, but uh, she wasn't training great. At Churchill was a little off, decided to skip the race. She has picked up her game since then, has been training outstanding. Comes into this great, does pick up uh, Joe Rosario, who's at the top of his game. Probably the leading rider in the country right now. Uh, I could see using either horse. Does add blinkers today. If you're looking for two long shots in the race, I like the one a little bit, Manuka Honey. Since moving this horse to uh, dirt, the horse has been two wins in a second. The most recent second was in the Fantasy Stakes to uh, Rose to Gold. That horse was in the Kentucky Oaks. Ran fairly well and is well meant. Draws the rail with Edgar Prado. Uh, local connections here, John Terranova. Would not surprise me if this horse uh, factored. The other horse in the race is Maracua, which is uh, sired by Big Brown, who won the uh, Preakness Stakes over this very oval. Two, two career starts, both winning efforts. John Velasquez in tow. Does get a weight. Um, allowance here of only carrying 116, so gets to drop weight for this race. Uh, this is our first uh, dive into deep waters. Is a half sister to Peyton Dioro, who did win this race. Um, intriguing kind of middle priced horse. I think this is going to be a great betting race. There's nine horses of the three major stakes on the weekend. This would be the one to bet. Takes us to race 12, which is the Pimlico Special. Um, small field of seven. Uh, I like the favorite in the chalk horse, which is the number seven last gunfighter, uh, trained by Chad, Chad Brown, will be ridden by uh, J.J. Castellano, who has ridden in the past, comes into this off a five-way winning streak, including the last time out in the grade three Excelsior and Aqueduct. Um, pretty much looks to be the form of the race. Um, program seven to five, ascending buyers. Only thing does pick up some weight for this race. Uh, same distance as the uh, Preak mistakes. Mile and three sixteenths. Uh, I just like the horse a lot. I think that uh, uh, he's not only probably the, the fastest horse in the race, but the most talented horse in the race, and a horse that's going the right direction. Uh, the other two main contenders are the four horse eight too fast to catch was Tim O'Keefe trainee. He's a local horse who's made a living in um, small starter stakes all over Maryland and West Virginia. Um, Freak last time out in a five horse field at Pimlico in the slop, one by five lengths, got a good speed figure. No one was in the race. Not that there's that much more in this race, but uh, he is going to face a little bit better competition. Um, speed does play very well at Pimlico, but I just can't see this guy wiring him. Just don't think he's classy enough to do it, but yeah, he could be on the ticket. The wild card in the weight race is Richard's Kid, going to be ridden by Rosie and Provnik. Richard's Kid started his career out in. Um, Maryland, and uh, since went on to bigger and better things, uh, racing overseas in Dubai, has had a good uh, career out in Bob Baffert's barn, was moved from Bob Baffert to Doug O'Neill and sold last August. Uh, horse has done 
uh, had a great career, $2 million, but in his last six, eight races, just has not done anything. 44 career starts, eight years old. Uh, Doug O'Neill says there's more in the tank. I know he resurrected Lava Man a couple times. I'm not sure Richard's kid can be, but he finds the softest spot he's seen in maybe the last two or three years. And if he is going to wake up and show some of that back class, this would be the spot. The only other horse is a horse called Brimstone Island. Again, maybe a blown up allowance horse. Did run second last year to Painter uh, in the undercard on the Preakness Stakes. Just a wild card. But again, looks very chalky, very formful. I think it takes it to the Saturday's card, which is the Kentucky Derby. It's very hard to bet against the one orb. Just a fantastic race in the Kentucky Derby. Yes, he did chase a fast pace, um, but he won professionally. Uh, a competitor, uh, rider Gary Stevens, said he galloped out very good after the race. And that's coming from a competitor, Shug McGay. He said he's trained back. He's bounced back after the race. Uh, local uh, exercise rider Jim Patterson says he's on his game. Everything's going. All systems go. Uh, the only knock on him is he did draw the rail. Uh, morning line maker Frank Crowley made him even money. I've got him on my line at three to five. I wouldn't play him under three to five. Uh, although I think he's got a six seventy five eighty percent chance of winning, um, it's it's just hard to take a low price. Um, there's nothing in the field. It's a nine horse field. D. Wayne Lucas, coach, uh, entered three horses. Two of them should not be entered in a race. So it probably should have been a six seven horse field anyway. He's chased that many people away. I think that they realize this might be the next great horse. He's done nothing wrong since adding Lasix. Has Joel Rosario. That every all systems go. Again, the rail is somewhat troubling, but keep in mind, he did have the rail in the Fountain of Youth, which was a nine-horse field, and didn't win that day, beat Todd Fletcher's horse violence, who was at the, one of the top three-year-olds at that point in time. So I think he's got a lot in his corner. I would not play against him. I think he might be a great single in pick fives, pick sixes, pick fours. Um, some horses maybe to catch underneath. I think Golden Sense, the two, Doug O'Neill's horse, speed horse, could take to Pimlico and do very well. Another horse that I like a lot is number seven, Will Take Charge, which is uh, D. Wayne Lucas's horse. He was moving very well with Orb until he ran into uh, Verrazano. Had to check badly, finished eighth. But uh, if he makes that same move, he was off seven weeks. He could factor in here, and I think he could run underneath. Um, other wild cards in a race could be the nine, It's My Lucky Day. I'm not really sold on this horse, but he did get a great post, and he, did pick, he does pick up John Velasquez. His running style puts him right where he needs to be to win the Preakness. Uh, he's been beat on the square by Orb. I don't expect him to turn the tables, but definitely a horse that could probably run underneath second. Um, the two horses that could run second that I'm probably going to try to play against is the four departing. Uh, he beat a very lackluster field in the uh, Hawthorne Derby in Chicago. And number five, My Loot, was Tom Amos's horse, ran great in the Derby, ran a game fifth, was a step away or two from being third. Uh, I just, the morning line maker made him second choice. I think it's a horse you try to beat in exact. I definitely use in tries and supers. But uh, if you're going to make money, it's either in the pick sixes, pick fours, or trying to beat someone in the exacta. That's how I see it. I think Orb's on his way to Belmont with two down and one to go. We'll see how he does there. Um, I think the only thing else he has to do is stay close to the pace. But Orb's my selection as well as uh, everyone else, and I think he'll get it done. That's how I see the Preakness, and that's how I see the Preakness weekend. Good luck and happy wagering. Make sure you catch the undercards. Some great races.